Hey there, my name is Alexis, and I'm going to show you how I made this custom chessboard using only red oak, two separate stains, and a couple other materials, along with a hidden storage compartment for my Simpsons themed chess pieces. So from what I've seen online, typically chessboards are made with two different types of wood materials, usually a light colored and dark colored material, to distinguish the light squares from the dark squares once the chessboard is put together. Uh, given my limited availability of resources and me just always using red oak, I decided to just stick with red oak and essentially stain the same wood with two different stains so that it distinguishes the light squares from the dark squares. So I bought a couple strips of quarter inch thick red oak. They're about an inch and a half in width. So all I had to do was cut each one to about an inch and a half long. So once I figured out where... I should be cutting it. I put a piece of scrap wood at the other side of my miter saw to act as a stop block so I can make repeatable cuts. And then it was just a matter of cutting this 60 plus more times until I achieved at least 64 pieces. I think I cut about 70 pieces just in case I had a couple pieces may have been chipped in the process since it's wedged in between a saw blade and a stop block so sometimes it got flown outward and into the blade so there were a couple of times where that happened also sometimes the sawdust would build up against the stop block and i wouldn't notice it so occasionally i would have to clean that space just to make sure i end up with a close to square piece <sighs> who would have thought i should have checked the thickness of the quarter inch red oak board that's supposed to be a quarter inch thick so this is made up of a two and a half strips of this red oak board and you can see from here is one strip because it's pretty flat continuous and whatnot then here it's like a big old i don't even know what the hell to describe this as but it seems like one side is quarter inch and the other side is maybe a sixteenth of an inch thinner. I didn't realize that these marks here, this roughness, wasn't just because it's rough, but it's still a quarter inch thick. This is actually about a sixteenth of an inch thinner. And basically majority of this board is going to be uneven. And I have to go pick up two new boards. So there goes $10 down the drain. Ugh, at least it doesn't take that long to cut these now, but still a pain in the ass and a waste of money. What am I going to do with these? So the thing about red oak is it can have a lot of variations in its color, as you can see here. So I just distributed the colors throughout the whole board just so it's not too concentrated in certain areas. And in the end, it didn't really matter because you don't notice that tint difference in the wood after the stain and dying. So I didn't know at the time that it wouldn't make a difference. So I just did it just to be safe. Ideally, I would have wished I had only two different tints versus three so that I could just dedicate one stain for each different wood tint or wood variation. So for one set of squares, I used black India ink. And then for the other set of squares, I used fabric dye by RIT. Um, I was concerned because on the website it said you can dye or stain wood, but on the bottle itself, there's no mention of it. But ultimately, it did work. It required multiple coats because each coat only put a thin shade of that color. So I think I did about four to six coats. And I would just at first put on a thick coat on top, come back in about a minute or two to wipe off any excess. And then I'll put on another layer shortly after. Once all the pieces were dyed, I started working on the base platform for the actual chest squares, which I used half inch thick plywood where the chest squares are going to be glued on top of. So to start up the glue up, I attached these thin strips of oak board against two sides of the plywood base so that I kind of have a reference to where I should glue up the first row and column of the chest board so that the edges of the first row and column are flush with the edge of the plywood base, just to ensure that the top square pieces are gonna be square with the plywood base. So in terms of the glue up, it was pretty easy for the most part. I just put glue on both the plywood base and on the chest square, just to ensure that it adheres to it. And I also just try to avoid putting any glue on the edges of the squares, just to avoid any squeeze off from the sides and then making a mess and then I think there were a couple times where it happened. I just made sure I quickly cleaned it up with a rag with water. 
So when I was first going to do this glue up, I was just going to do the first row, second row, third row, etc. But I figured it would make more sense to do the first row than the first column and do the second row, the second column, third row, third column, etc. So that when you do the next row and column, they're being held up by the previous row and columns, which shouldn't be moving because the glue is probably cured by then. It only takes maybe five minutes for that glue to cure long enough that it's not going to move as you're applying the other chest squares. So if there was one thing I would do differently if I were to redo this is I wish I had made the plywood base a slightly bit more oversized because once the glue had cured I noticed that there was a little bit of overhang on some of the rows and columns so I'm guessing I didn't cut these squares perfectly square at times but it wasn't that big of a deal I was able to trim off that excess using a flush trim bit on my router and then I was able to proceed with the next step and one thing I would definitely recommend is having a scrap piece at the end of the cut so that you don't have tear out and potentially chip off the corner of the chessboard you just glued up because that will be a really annoying thing to fix. Next step is to make the frame that wraps around the chessboard. I used two and a half inch wide oak board and unfortunately my miter saw wasn't big enough to cut the oak board all the way if it was spanning the whole width of the miter saw. So once I went almost all the way, I had to finish up the cut using my flush cut handsaw to cut off the remaining half inch of material that's still attached before I can clean up the cuts, which is pretty annoying because after cutting it with the flush cut handsaw, I have to go back to the miter saw and clean up both sides of the miters before I can continue with the build. So I had to do six more unnecessary cuts plus three cuts with the flush cut handsaw. So it was just a lot of waste of time there. Alternatively, you can use a cross cut sled on a table saw, but I didn't have that, which is why I had to go through this process. So once all four sides were cut and mitered up, I had to start making grooves for the acrylic sheet that's gonna act as a door that slides in and out that allows me to access the chest pieces. And for one of the four sides of the frame, I'm actually gonna cut it all the way through to save for later. Next step is to work on the storage compartment for the actual chest pieces and I picked up this inch and a half thick polyethylene foam and I need to remove some thickness from it because the acrylic sheet wouldn't fit if I did so I added some spacers underneath it and I use a flush cut handsaw to carefully remove some material and I just wrapped around the whole area until I felt like I removed enough material that it should fit where the acrylic sheet wouldn't be interfering with the actual foam. Later on, I did have to take off more, but at this stage, it was enough for me to continue on with the build. Next, I glued up the frame, doing a thin prime coat of wood glue on all contact surfaces where the glue will be applied. And I usually add this prime coat because the way end grain works, it sucks up glue like a sponge. So by putting a prime coat, it clogs up most of the pores so that when you do the actual glue up, it will be a much stronger bond. And for mitered frames like this, I normally add splines to reinforce the frames, but since it's not gonna be moving around a lot, it's not gonna go through a lot of stress, I just felt like it won't be needed, but I guess it's possible the wood could expand and contract enough that it will break the miters in the future, and then if it does then, then I'll re-glue it and add splines then. Once the glue for the frame finally cures, I cut these little spacer pieces so that I can reattach that thin strip of oak board when I was making the grooves back onto the actual frame because if I left it as is, it'll be a quarter inch gap on one side that'll be open and not look nice. So by adding the spacer, I can reattach that strip and keep it structurally strong because if I didn't add this spacer and I just glued it from the mitered space only it would easily pop off within one light tug on it and by doing this it kind of keeps the box looking complete with the exception of that sliver opening where the acrylic will be sliding in and out and I actually did the same process when I made my case for my external hard drive from a previous build if you want to check that out once the glue finally cured, I removed the excess material from the spacers that I left in there, and then I could finally start sanding it smooth, then I can apply my stain. And for the frame itself, I used Black India ink, and I added a couple coats to this frame because the way the grain pattern is, it doesn't absorb the ink as well because that grain is pretty deep there. So I had to add some thick coats of ink here and there. And to attach the chessboard, I initially wanted to glue it up together, but thinking of how messy it's going to be. I just used L brackets to hold everything together. 
And for the finish, I applied three coats of oil-based poly with light hand sanding using 400 grit sandpaper in between coats. Just remove any rough surfaces, which is typical when applying any type of poly really. One of the final steps I had to do was cut out the openings where the chest pieces are going to be stored inside of. And it was a little tricky because these chest pieces aren't conventional sizes. I had to be a little creative on where these pieces should be laid out relative to the 12 inch by 12 inch space. And I had to cram some of these pieces in just to make it fit nicely and make sure the walls in between these spaces weren't too thin, but I got it to work. The final step was to cut the actual acrylic sheet that's going to cover the chest pieces when it's in storage. And if you've seen any of my previous builds, I've used acrylic quite a lot. So it's pretty simple to cut acrylic once you get the hang of it. I use a straight edge, a couple clamps, and an acrylic cutting knife. And I usually spend about a minute or two cutting grooves into each side of the acrylic sheet just to ensure that it's going to cut really cleanly. Depending on how much pressure you put, you may want to spend more time on it. And when I first started cutting acrylic, I never really did it on both sides until recently. And that was just because there was a couple times where I cut it on one side only and it left a kind of a rough edge. And I think it was just because I never cut it on both sides. And by cutting it this way, you're guaranteed to have a really clean cut with minimal sanding needed. Last step is to cut a hole into the acrylic and I use a Forstner bit to make the hole. And it took a couple tries on some scrap acrylic to figure out what's the right pressure and speed I should put the Forstner bit on to the acrylic because if you put too much pressure or put too much speed, it will cause the acrylic that you're cutting to harden up and like accumulate on the edges and then it just becomes really messy and annoying to clean. So I would practice this on some scrap acrylic before doing it on the actual piece itself. And so with that, I'm done with the build. I hope you enjoyed the video and I've always wanted to make this for the longest time. I lost the chessboard probably shortly after getting the whole set and this is probably 15, maybe 20 years old now. So I, I feel like it's, a waste to throw them out and they're probably not a collector's item well at least mine aren't they're pretty scratched up so they're probably not worth much at this point but it's more of like a nostalgic thing to me i used to watch the simpsons since i was like 10 years old so it feels good to give these chess pieces an actual second life now that they have their own chess board and now it gives me an excuse to play chess again so i hope you liked the video if you did please consider giving it a like consider subscribing i just hit 500 subscribers today so Definitely appreciate the support from everybody that subscribed or watched my videos. And yeah, thanks again for watching and take care.